In our previous video, we looked at several examples of drawing Lewis structures. So now I'm asking you to draw a Lewis structure for a compound that has the molecular formula C2H6O. So please stop the video and draw a structure. Hopefully you actually did stop the video and you drew a structure. Now you might have drawn something with the connectivity of carbon connected to carbon connected to oxygen. And so filling in the details, you would have three hydrogens connected to the first carbon, two hydrogens connected to the second carbon, and then the oxygen with one hydrogen connected and two lone pairs. It's also possible that you drew a structure with the connectivity of carbon, oxygen, carbon. So here you would have three hydrogens connected to the first carbon, followed by an oxygen, followed by a carbon with three hydrogens connected. So notice I didn't give you information on connectivity. I just gave you the molecular formula C2H6O. Both of these have that formula, but they have very different connectivity. They also have very, very different properties. This is an alcohol. It's a liquid at room temperature, and it boils at 78.5 degrees Celsius. This is an ether, and it's a gas at room temperature. It has a boiling point of negative 24 degrees. So the molecular formula, just knowing how many of which types of atoms, that doesn't give the full information about a type of compound. We need more information on structure. So these compounds that we have here, these are examples of isomers. Now isomers would be a pair of compounds that have the same molecular formula, but are different compounds. Isomers can be subdivided into constitutional isomers or stereoisomers. With constitutional or geometric isomers, what we're talking about is different connectivity. So that's what we have here, where we have carbon, carbon, oxygen, compared to carbon, oxygen, carbon. The atoms are connected together differently. Stereoisomers, on the other hand, will have the same connectivity, but a different arrangement in space. And we will see some examples of stereoisomers in later chapters. So I expect you to be able to define and identify constitutional isomers. Remember, these are compounds that have the same molecular formula, but different connectivity, which makes them different compounds with different physical properties and different reactivity. Since we just defined constitutional isomers, I want you to be able to tell me whether these compounds are isomers. Now, it's important to be able to focus on the carbons. So if we look at our first structure, we have carbon connected to carbon, connected to carbon, connected to carbon. If we look at our second structure, we have carbon, 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 and then it bends down here to show another carbon. But what we have here is just a difference in representation. In each case, we have four carbons connected in a line. Even this third carbon that looks different, this carbon is connected to two other carbons. This carbon is connected to two other carbons. Writing a Lewis structure does not indicate details of shape. That's a topic that we're gonna talk about later. So it's important that you do not confuse different representations with isomers because these are not constitutional isomers, they are the same compound. If we look at our third example, now we have carbon connected to carbon connected to carbon and this central carbon is connected to another carbon. 
And so here we have different connectivity. This central carbon is connected to three carbons, whereas in either of these representations, we don't have any single carbon that's connected to three other carbons. So here we do have different connectivity. And so this is a constitutional isomer of these. So these are different representations of the same compound, but these, or these, are isomers. So whenever you are drawing structures or whenever you are reading a structure, be very careful not to mix up different representation with different connectivity.